Yo, what's up guys, now it's UFC. Welcome back to another Tips and Tricks video. This one is going to help you improve your stand-up 100%. Uh, a lot of you have been asking for another boxing combinations video. I'm actually going to do you one better. So if you guys don't know, back in Season 1, I made a Top 5 Boxing Combinations video. And you guys loved it. It, it helped you guys learn some of the combinations. But it only got you guys so far. And some of those combos aren't even effective anymore, guys. Because it's been about 5 months. A lot of changes have happened to the stand-up, the stamina, the health. So, yeah, some of those combinations are quite useless. So instead of me doing another top five boxing combinations video again, I'm going to show you guys how you can think of combinations on the spot in your actual online matches and use them. I actually think that's the better way to play this game. I'm, I'm going to try to change your mindset. You shouldn't think that playing UFC 5, you need to know a bunch of combos in your head and then, you know, you execute them whilst you're in your match. No, that's not how the game is supposed to be played. It's a chess match. You need to figure out what works, what doesn't. And if something doesn't work, you need, to, you need to know how to adapt to it and do something different. So I'm going to guide you guys in this video on what I mean. So just to start off with, guys, so you understand. So when I play my online UFC 5 matches, right, um, I like to take things slow, of course, because um, they're, they're nerfing the stamina. The stamina is getting lower and lower as time goes on. So you need to be more efficient, guys. So one thing I like to do, guys, is throw that body jab in round one. It's a good way to start off the match because the jab to the body's actually been buffed. It does less damage, but it drains their stamina more. Stamina is still a bit shit on this game, but eventually, guys, it will sort itself out. Um, so, yeah, I like, to, I like to throw that jab just on its own. I don't combo off it just yet. So I want to give my opponent the impression, the impression that all I'm doing is jabbing their body and I'm running away, that's all I'm doing. And then, I could do it halfway through round one or at the start of round two. Then I can start to combo off it because my opponent won't expect it, you know? So I can start to go bang, bang, right? So I've just thrown a second punch there. So that's that's the sort of things I want you guys to do, right? And then you can go back to your single jabs because you don't want to keep spamming two punch combo, right? If you're feeling really cheeky and have got low body health, you can actually go for a bang, bang, two hooks. No one actually, no one really expects you to, to throw a second punch off a body jab. It's just not a thing. Maybe if you throw a hook, it might be obvious. But a jab, no. No one really expects that. If for some reason, guys, and this is what I mean by adapting to your opponents, right? If you throw a jab and the second shot gets blocked, that second body hook gets blocked, then maybe think about going higher like that. You know, you want to get in that trial and error thought process when you're playing these matches. And you see how I just thought of that combo on the spot. That's what I want you guys to do, right? So it's going going lower than high. Look at my controller. So all I'm doing is throwing a body jab. And I'm still moving forward and throwing a hook. Because if you plant your feet and try for the hook, it don't work. You need to keep moving forward to, that, to do that second hook. Um, so, yeah, that's one example. Um, another combo I like to throw a lot, guys, when I'm in the pocket is... A lead hook body uppercut. The reason I like to throw a body uppercut is because the the window to block after you throw an uppercut is a lot faster. If you throw a hook, it could take a long time to block. I've noticed that when I've played in my online matches. Also, if you throw an uppercut, you can use head movement a lot faster too. If you, if you throw a hook, it takes a long time. But with an uppercut, it's almost instant. Um, Slipping is a good thing because... Um, you can avoid uppercuts because a lot of online players they like to return uppercuts when you hit their bodies so it's it's you know i always try recommend slipping you know to the side if your opponent throws hooks then you could either duck which is a bit risky or you could pull pull pulling back is a bit slow that's the only issue that's why i like slipping um don't just slip guys do everything in your power to try to get out of there I, sometimes i like to do a little bit of movement you know, like, not too much, because if you move too much, it won't let you slip. You want to go back and, like, you want to slip first and move back at the same time. You know, that's, that helps you get out of there, because you don't want to stay there when your stamina's low. Do your damage and run away with it. So, another another thing you could do, guys, once you've slipped, right, instead of blocking and moving away, right, sorry, let me do this again. You can throw a second body shot, right? That's effective. Um bang like that block like that but if you notice your opponent's reading that and they're blocking low right they're blocking that shot the third shot low then you can go high instead 
That's what I would do. So you would go bang, bang, hi, that. That's something you could do. That's another example of adapting to your, you know, your opponent's defense. All right, cool guys. Now I'm going to show you guys how you can set up nice combinations of slip counters, right? And I'm going to show you guys small adaptations you can make to make sure you land your punches and do damage. Um, so I've set my opponent, Dustin Poirier, to throw a simple one, two, just like that, right? A simple combination. And the counter I'm going to pull off is a slip uppercut like that. And guys, don't waste these opportunities. If you can pull off these counters, you know, combo off it. Start throwing your combinations off it. So one thing I like to do is slip, throw the uppercut, and then throw that lead body hook just like that, right? And once I've thrown that lead body hook, right, I actually like to come up high. So like bang, bang, right? And that does crazy damage. If you throw a combination like that in round two or three, you're definitely going to get stunned and knocked down. So I'll show you guys what the combo looks like. By the way, guys, if you haven't watched my counter video, make sure you watch it. I explain how to pull off counters. So really briefly, I'm going to explain. My opponent's going to throw a 1-2, right? I've noticed that my opponent's been spamming 1-2s, so I'm prepared to pull a counter. The counter I'm going to pull off is a slip counter, right? So I always say you should counter the second punch. So I'm going to block the jab, and that's going to be my signal to slip. So I'm going to slip and counter that second punch with a uppercut like that. And then I'm going to do my combination, right? So in real time, it's going to look like this. Just like that. That combination is lethal, guys, especially if they've got quite low body health. You might even stun them low, which will get them to block low. Then you come up high with a hook, right? Super, super effective. And if you notice your, your opponent's blocking that third shot to the head, then you can double up to the bodies. So what I mean is you can go like that. And trust me, guys, if that's if you're doing combos like that in round three, round two, off counters like that, you're going to get body stuns. And once you've stunned them, guys, stay composed, right? Try try to do as much damage as you can whilst they're in that that state where they you know they can't do damage back because they're hurt. So what I like to do if they're stunned to the body, I like to fake low, go high, little sh little stuff like that. And guys, just a reminder: all these combos I'm showing you in this video, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to teach you guys combinations. I'm trying to put you guys in the thought process of adapting and throwing different comp punches. So another thing your opponent could do, guys, is if you counter, right? Sorry, if you counter, sometimes that counter don't work because your opponent might be cracked and they might actually pull your uppercut. So instead of going high and throwing that counter to the head, right, you can go low like that. See what I did there? Because if they try using head movement then, then your, their body's wide open. That makes sense. So just little stuff like that you need to figure out. Right, cool guys. Next, I'm going to show you guys how you can throw a combo off a pull counter this time. So not a slip counter, a pull counter. Dustin Poirier is going to throw a jab hook combo. And I'm going to pull back, go low, go high, go low, go low. That's one combo I like to throw. Obviously, if you throw two punches to the body, guys, just be a little bit wary. If they do block one of your punches, be prepared to slip because that's what I will do. Um, but if you decide to go low and high, then that's a smart thing to do too. So Dustin Poirier is going to go ahead and throw a jab hook. Just make sure to slip like I just did there. Might be actually hurt him there, guys. Um, so now we're going to go high this time. Okay, so instead of going low with two shots, we're going to go high. So we're going to go bang, 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 bang. Like that lethal, guys, lethal. And you you got to make the you got to throw the right punches, guys. Make the right decisions. If Dustin Poirier is blocking higher most of the time, then obviously I'm going to focus his body and throw more punches low. If he's blocking low, then I can go higher. But like I said, guys, be wary. He doesn't block t the punches to the body because if he does, he might retaliate with a uppercut. So just be careful of that. Um, if you are fighting someone that retaliates with an uppercut, like like you just seen, then maybe think about slipping. And guys, if you're feeling lethal, right, you can you can slip and block and play it safe. That's not a that's a smart thing to do, right? But if you're feeling dangerous, guys, you can slip and counter off and counter off that, and you know chain another combo. So, you, so let's just say you've just you've done your double body combo. You slipped, you start throwing more shit, guys, and you know you can get matches done quick if you fight with a style like that. Super risky, risky though, because you're going to be burning your stamina but you guys get the point.
Right, cool guys. I'm about to go into a ranked match. I'm going to further explain some of the points I made earlier. I'm going to give you guys some insight as to what I'm thinking during these matches. I'm going to show you guys, you know, how I adapt, when I do it. And yeah, like I said earlier, guys, I'm going to start off patient. It's a three round fight, so I don't need to be too patient. I might, you know, I might start the fight off with my jab and, you know, stuff like that and combo off it. You know, I'm not going to just focus the body 100%. Matty. Cool, I don't know who this guy is. He's a Tony player. But I'm just going to be myself, guys. If I do stop speaking, guys, it's just because I'm locked in. But he's a bit wary himself, guys. So we need to, first of all, we need to work out the distancing. I don't want to chase him, you know. I want to see how close I need to get for him to start throwing back first. So I, I need to get pretty close. So if we, if we can keep him like behind the fence, I don't really mind that. As long as we stay out of kicking range, and when we enter, we run in. Look at the stand, guys. See how his stand is a bit low. Uh, if we keep doing that, guys, it will keep getting lower and lower and lower. It's only a three-round fight, though, so we shouldn't really be investing too much in the stand. We should be focusing more health, if anything, guys. I tried to double up, didn't work. Moving around too much. Another thing is, guys, I'm winning the rounds. So I'm not trying to be too aggressive. If he really wants to play this all day, I'm happily going to do that, guys. I'm top five ranked in the world, guys. So I'm not risking my ranked points trying to fight him. He might be a counter fighter, and I'm kind of keeping him outside his comfort zone. That's what I'm thinking about. Work, work, I didn't say work. There you go. Body kick. I want this guy to chase me. He seems like an outside fighter. Come on, Tony, what are you doing? See that, guys? He expected me to go low, so I went high. I knew he was going to block low because I thrown a body kick earlier and I was jabbing him up. I've made him concerned about that body. So I, I won't expect that head kick to work again, so I could actually go low again. He's getting more and more closer to me, guys. Kind of understanding my opponent. Notice how I blocked his teep, guys. He might be a bit agitated. I've actually blocked a few of his teeps. He might actually start going high now. Just got to be wary of that. Guys, I know it's a boring fight, but this is Division 20 ranked, man. Sweaty. Run away with my damage. Locks it. It's a bit jumpy. Wonder what this guy's got planned for me in round two. All right, guys. So we just look at the stats, guys. He actually landed nothing on me that whole round. He landed zero strikes, zero significant strikes. I definitely won that round. So I've been untouched. So sorry, I've not been touched at all. So beautiful round for me. I'll take that all day long, man. And a lot of guys, a lot of you guys say to me, like, Naz, what do you do with someone that's running away constantly? Don't chase them. Do your damage, win the round, and just play their game against them. Simple as that, guys. So body combo, guys, I like to do. If he starts to block that low punch, I'll, I'll just go high. See that? That's one, two words because he's concerned about the body too much. He's getting aggressive. I think he's getting too close to me now. I hope he looked at the stat and seen he landed nothing. He went low there, I think. If he does go low, I'm prepared to block it out. There you go, he lands his first shot. That'll give him some confidence. 
There you go. And Tony. Try to agitate him. Beautiful. Slipped into that. I'm just throwing the hook to see how he reacts, and he ducked. Bit of a big reaction. He landed that uppercut on me. The round's close now, so I do need to do something significant to know I'm winning. Take down, body kick as he gets up. Got to throw a jab hook. See how he blocked the third shot, guys. If I get in a situation like that again, I'm going to make sure I go low a little bit more and go high. He's still blocking high. See that? So I'm going to double up and body shot, guys. Blocks low. Good defense. Shit. Or he'd be concerned about the head health. I got a bit lucky there, guys. Blocked that perfectly. Let's start going high now, guys. Nah. There you guys see that? He blocked low, so. That's what I mean, guys, by adapting and not doing the same combo over and over. You want to think of combos on the spot that you know will land because your opponent will behave in a certain way. And if they're making the read and they know what they're, you're throwing, they're going to keep blocking it. And eventually, if, you, if they keep blocking your combos, that will lead to them doing counters, right? And that's, you don't want your opponent to to be countering your strikes. That's what that's when you'll lose. That's when you'll get dropped, and stunned. You don't want to be obvious ever. You want to be constantly changing your pattern up. I'm, I'm confident I'm up two rounds, so this guy really needs to go for the finish, man. I'll be honest. I'll try to win every single round though. See how it slipped after that. He blocked the third body shot. Oh, good, good, good. Let's regen. Regen just means recover. Missed that completely. Same combo. It's like this guy's watched my combo, my video before even uploading it. There you go. Okay, he's making the read on that little jab I'm doing now. He's worked out the timing. I need to stop doing it now, guys. But he's gonna throw that straight lead up combo. Second. into a fight finally. I just avoid that. See how I adapted guys? I noticed he kept pulling high so I went low instead.
That's what makes me better than my guy. He's not really in that. Slammed. Round three knockout. I'm confident I was winning every single round anyways. Um, and that's what I mean, guys. You just got to invest in the damage, the stamina, and the knockouts, the stuns will come later on. That's just how this game works, man. You really need to be a patient player in this game. And um, I used to be a really, really aggressive player on UFC 4, and it was really hard for me to adapt on this game. And, you know, a, a few of my friends were like, Maz, you need to be patient. You need to get rid of your ego and stop being an aggressor and just play like a smart, technical, patient fighter. And, you know, the damage will eventually add up and you'll get your knockouts eventually or you'll win by decision. Let's just take the look at the judges' scorecard here. Yeah, I won both first, uh, the round one and two, so I was definitely winning that. And if we look at round one, he actually landed nothing on me in round one. I think he was trying to gas me out, but I wasn't throwing too many strikes. I was being efficient, as you could see. Um, round two was pretty close, but I just about took it. Um, round three, obviously, I finished him, but I would have won that if it went to decision anyways. But yeah, guys, so that is it for my video. If it has helped you out, make sure you drop a like. And if you want more, more videos like these in the future, then let me know. If there's any other videos you guys want, let me know in the comment section below and I'll be sure to drop that. It can be ground game tutorials. It can be a completely different topic. Just let me know. And yeah, guys, make sure you subscribe for more content. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.